أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا حبيبنا محمد عبده ورسوله أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا وداعيا إلى الله بإذنه وسراجا منيرا أما بعد يا برادرز السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I am very honored to have been invited to today's gathering simply because as Bangladeshi actually I was born in Bangladesh in 1971 for those of you who are thinking how old this man and was he or is he a Razakar too <laughs> I'm not a Razakar, I was only born in 1971. And I, did, I look like a Razakar, somebody said. What does a Razakar look like? Um, we'll have to find out. Um, so I was born in 1971 in a small village in Bangladesh. And my mother said um, bombs were falling in every direction she still remembers. It was a very frightening experience. Alhamdulillah, I'm still alive and I'm here to tell you my side of the story. Brothers, this current crisis in Bangladesh is not a crisis of nationality. It is not a crisis of existence of Bangladesh alone. It is a crisis of existence of Islam and the Muslims in that particular part of the world. Current government is threatening to obliterate Islam from the face of this earth through their conspiracy and their program. And we as Muslims, conscientious Muslims, we will not allow and tolerate anyone threatening to obliterate Islam from Bangladesh, the third most populous Muslim country in the world. Because they want to obliterate Islam from the face of this earth, they've created a circus of the media, they've created a circus within the courts, and they have told the world that they're trying to punish the war criminals. In fact, they're not punishing the war criminals. They are trying Islam and the Muslims from all over the world. And we as Muslims will not tolerate such behavior on the part of any government, never mind Bangladeshi government. When British government attacked Iraq, we stood firm in opposing British government. I told Tony Blair on his face when I met him, Mr. Blair, your hand is full of blood and you should apologize to the Muslim community openly. And he said, my hand isn't full of blood. I did the right thing. I told Mr. Blair, you are lying. You're the only one who believes you did the right thing. Why would I hesitate in telling Hasina and her government that she's doing something wrong? Bangladesh was founded because Pakistan was doing grave injustice to Bangladesh and Bangladeshis. I think we all agree on that. Yes. 1971 and before, Pakistan was perpetrating crimes against Bangladeshis, yes. oppressing Bangladesh, creating economic disadvantage for Bangladesh, creating political isolation for Bangladesh. And that, of course, is wrong. In 1970, when Mujibur Rahman with our Muslim League won the election across West and East Pakistan and demanded to create a government. Yahya Khan, conspiring with Bhutto, decided that Bangladeshis don't deserve to provide leadership to Pakistan. Pakistanis do not deserve to live under the rule of Bangladeshis. That was, in my view, a conspiracy led by Bhutto and Yahya Khan, not the Pakistani people at large. And that's the reason why Bangladesh was founded. Bangladesh was founded on the basis that some people were oppressing Bangladesh and Bangladeshis. There were injustices perpetrated against Bangladeshis. On the 25th of March, 1971, when Pakistani army deployed itself in Dhaka city, killing hundreds of people, I believe that injustice required a robust response. And Bangladeshis provided a robust response to Pakistan saying, we will not tolerate injustice in our country. 
We will not tolerate you killing our brothers and sisters. We will not tolerate living like a second class citizen. We will make a country of our own, independent and prosperous. And Bangladeshis did succeed in doing so. What happened in 1971 when the Pakistani army attacked Bangladesh? What is the difference between that time and today when the thugs of current government are attacking Muslims in Bangladesh? What is the difference? None. Pakistanis, Pakistani armies attacked, destroyed and raped our brothers and sisters. These Bangladeshis are attacking, destroying and killing our brothers and sisters in Bangladesh. Yes. And it's a shame on them. We will not tolerate such undemocratic, uncivilized behavior on the part of a government. Yes, that's right. The perpetrators of war crimes in 1971. Absolutely right. We want to try them all. We want to try all the war criminals. Am I right? Yes. Let's start with the war criminals that lurk in Hasina's own home. Her daughter's father-in-law is the biggest war criminal walking around. Yes. We would like to see him tried on the war crimes tribunal. Yes. But no, that's not going to happen. It's Hasina's... What's the Bengali word? What's the Bengali word for B.I.? BI that's it. Hasina's B.I. Yeah? B.I. would be Sanlagana. MashaAllah. Shoyashra Mantri. He was a Razakar too. Amazing. The Razakars in the cabinet can walk around free. Razakar in Hasina's home can walk around free. But Razakar coming from Jamaat Islam, he must be hanged. Hello? Look, I asked, two days ago I received a phone call from somebody from the current governing, governing party, a senior member from our league. He called me up and he said, how dare you give such speeches? How dare you support Jamaat Islami? I said, no, I don't support Jamaat Islami at all. I support Islam. There's a big difference between Jamaat Islami and Islam. Yeah. Islam is Allah's deen and Jamaat Islami is a political party. Our, we say, Sami'na wa ta'na to who? Allah Azza wa Jal. We say, Inna salati wa nusuki wa mahiyaya wa mamati lillahi rabbil alameen to who? He azza wa jal. Not to Jamaat Islami. The secular fundamentalists in Bangladesh and Shabag are so confused. I, can, I think I can, they can hear me very well. Can you hear me at the back? Yeah. I'm too loud. It's okay. The, the secular fundamentalists in Shabag are so confused. They don't know the difference between Islam and Jamaat Islami at all. You pray, you become Jamaat Islami. You say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This becomes a Jamati Salam too. <laughs> you have a beard. Apparently, some of the Shahbag people have a beard. But I think they forgot to shave. <laughs> I'm not sure. Whatever their intention is, if they have a beard, may Allah accept it, inshallah. Look, brothers and sisters, there is a confusion in Bangladesh, and I believe this confusion needs to be clarified once, once and for all. We are believers in one Allah, we are believers in justice, we are believers in fairness. We believe that everyone is equal in the eyes of Allah. And that's what we want to see in Bangladesh in all parts of the world. Current government in Bangladesh is trying to derail that process. I asked this guy, so, okay, you are afraid of me. You don't like me. You want to tell me off for speaking against Bangladeshi government. Please tell me. What did Saidi do in 1971? He goes to me, nothing. I said, is Saidi guilty of any crimes of 1971? He said, no, he isn't guilty of any crime in 1971. This is, a, this is our Milik man speaking to me on the phone. So I said to him, your party has set up a kangaroo court that has found Saidi guilty of crimes in 1971 and is going to sentence him to death. On what basis? What's the reason if he has not committed a single crime in 1971, why is he being hanged? You know what he said? He said to me, Jatiyo shatte koyakzon ke amadar fashi dite hobe. Astaghfirullah al-Azim. Astaghfirullah al-Azim. In the national, in the interest of the, in the national interest, we must hang some people even if they're innocent. That's what he said to me. Jatiyo shatte koyakzon ke fashi dite hobe. Khota bolo khota khoy. How dare he says that to me? What will he say to Allah Azza wa Jalla on the day of judgment? Well, he doesn't even believe in Allah, probably. 
اعدلوا هو اقرب للتقوى الله says be just that is the closest place you can be to Allah Azza wa Jal in everything my brothers we have to be just and fair if my father is wrong I have to stand up against justice and against my father if my family is unjust I have to stand up against my family and be for justice Allah Azza wa Jal says this in the Quran stand always for justice we Muslims believe in justice we want to see a fair court established in Bangladesh under the auspices of Hague, the Hague, the International War Crimes Tribunal, where it exactly sits today. Even if it's not under them, at least there should be those people who are observing what's going on. No, nobody is allowed to observe. We can do what we like, and we want to call it International Crimes Tribunal. There's not even eye of international in that tribunal. Such a shame that they could do that. E Economist exposed one of the judges. He is talking to a judge in Netherlands, telling them, him about private discussions of a court, giving a judgment before the trial is over, setting up how he should be giving what judgment. That's compromising the legal process completely. It's a kangaroo court. Yes. Yes. And that's the reason we oppose such a kangaroo court. But we support a fair and a free trial for all war criminals. Yes. Third point I want to make today to you, brothers, I am not interested in, in Bangladeshi politics. You should know this. For 41 years as I've lived so far, I'm 41 now. 41 years I've not shown any interest in Bangladeshi politics. I don't support BNP. I don't support Jamaat Islami. I don't support Awami League. I don't support Jatiya Party. I don't support any of them. In fact, I'm not interested in any of them. But I'm interested in justice. I'm interested in human rights, I'm interested in rule of law, and most importantly, I'm interested in Islam. Yes. And that's the reason I've spoken out. Somebody said to me the other day, why did you use the pulpit, member, to give a political speech? What do you mean I have given a political speech? I've spoken about the truth. I've spoken about what Allah and his messenger have spoken. What Allah and his messenger spoke when Rasulullah spoke to the Quraysh, when he spoke to the Roman emperor, the Persian emperor, he said the same thing. He said the same thing that no matter what happens, we will not allow you to abuse. You will not allow you to obliterate, even intend to obliterate what we stand for. You can't. Finally, to finish off, Brothers, I want to say something very pertinent to you. My children's future, your children's future, depends on this particular case in Bangladesh. Why do I say this? If Bangladeshi government is allowed to get away with such injustice, such human rights abuse, if Bangladeshi government is allowed to get away with the murders that they've committed, hundreds of people, who is responsible for the murder of hundreds of people in the last two weeks? Hasina, indeed. Who is responsible for it? Hasina indeed. We hold Hasina directly responsible for the killing of innocent people in Bangladesh. We hold responsible Hasina for killing of young people, women and children. We hold Hasina responsible for killing of our elderly people who are going to masjid. We hold responsible for the rickshaw driver who left his rickshaw, went out and came back on the way back, he was shot dead. We hold Hasina directly responsible. Allah Azza wa Jal says, من قتل نفس بغير نفس أو فساد في الأرض فكأنما قتل الناس جميعا whoever kills one life whoever takes one life unjustly and unfairly it is like they have taken the lives of the entire humanity Hasina you're responsible for the killing of the lives of the entire humanity yes. and we will not tolerate that and Allah Azza wa Jal also says in the Quran, وَمَنْ أَحْيَاهَا فَكَأَنَّمَا أَحْيَاهَا النَّاسَ جَمِيعًا Whoever saves a life, it is as though they have saved the lives of humanity. And we are here to save the lives of people of Bangladesh. Yeah. We are here to save Bangladesh from the future tyranny and turmoil. Yeah. We are here to save Bangladesh from the undemocratic slide Hasina's government has begun. We are here to tell the world. We are here to tell the world. One clear and emphatic message, and that is, we as Muslims do not submit to anything except Allah. Hasina, you can come and you can go. India can come and India can go. 
president of India is in Bangladesh. Congratulating, <laughs> congratulating Hasina for the dirty work. Shame on you, Hasina. Shame on the president of India too. How dare he comes to Bangladesh to congratulate Hasina on her dirty work. We know the conspiracy. India wants Bangladesh to be unstable. India doesn't like Bangladesh. India doesn't like Muslims. India doesn't like stable Muslim country, either, either in Pakistan or in Bangladesh. India doesn't want the Muslim community in India to be stable. That's why they were killing people in Gujarat not that long ago. Yes. We will not tolerate that. We will not tolerate that. We believe every life is sacred. We believe every human being is born with dignity and honor and must be given exactly that. So I'll ask you to do three things from today. Three moral and religious responsibilities you have. Number one, do you have members of your family who support current government? If you do, if you do, speak to them nicely, please. Speak to them nicely. Don't be rude. Don't be rude ever. Don't tell them off. Don't swear at them. Don't threaten them. Speak to them nicely. Speak to their hearts and their conscience. Tell them, how can you support a murderous party that is destroying Bangladesh? First thing you can do, speak to your family members. Anybody in any parts of the world should speak to the current governing party and their membership and say, leave that party immediately. For that party has lost the credibility and right to be called democratic. We should leave it as soon as possible. Number two, speak to your local MP. Roshnara is your local MP for most of you, right? Yeah, yeah. Speak to her when she comes here. If she doesn't come here, go to her surgery nicely and politely. Gently and tell her, Roshnara, we would like you to champion the cause of Bangladesh. We would like you to champion the cause of Bangladesh to end the bloodbath that is currently engulfing Bangladesh. Speak to your MP as much as you can. Your media as much as you can. Write to your media. All the Bangladeshi media who have been misrepresenting the true story of what is happening in Bangladesh, a shame on you. Shame on you for giving one-sided story. It's only the last two days they've woken up. They've suddenly realized, oh my God, actually people love Saidi. In fact, people don't love Saidi, people love Islam. And because Saidi is a Muslim, we also love him. And finally, stay united. Stay united. Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, وَلَا تَهِنُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا وَأَنْتُمُ الْأَعْلَوْنَا إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ Do not despair and do not give up. Do not despair and do not give up. If you don't despair and don't give up, you will be raised in the highest position only when you believe. We believers don't despair. وَلَا تَهِنُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا وَأَنْتُمُ الْأَعْلَوْنَ إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ If we believe, Allah will give you the highest position possible. So believers, brothers, I believe this. Bangladesh will become better tomorrow, inshallah. inshallah. Bangladesh will become free tomorrow, inshallah. inshallah. Bangladesh will be free from the current government, inshallah. inshallah. Bangladesh will be free from Hasina and her tyranny, inshallah. inshallah. And every life that is lost to protect Bangladesh. وَلَا تَحْسَبَنَّ الَّذِينَ قُتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أَمْوَاتِ for those who have died in the cause of Allah, don't, they, don't say they're dead, for they're receiving sustenance from Allah Azza wa Jal. We will not let one single blood to be lost in vain. We will not allow that to happen. We will stay together, inshallah, and we'll free Bangladesh once and for all. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.